Um, nerves are frayed. I think there's a lot of concern about the direction of travel overall in China at the moment. And on the one hand, I think the uninvestable comment points to two things. One, um, the people have not adjusted their expectations yet for the China market. So the days of easy money in China are over. The glory days of growth are over. The slowdown was going to happen, but it's become much more painful and uh, uncertain, partially because of some of the policy choices we're coming out of Beijing, that we've seen coming out of Beijing, and also some of the headwinds that you know all economies have been experiencing over the last few years. And then the other piece of it is this sense of uncertainty. So regardless of how you felt about kind of the leadership in Beijing or kind of the overall political landscape in China, people felt that it was a pragmatic and safe place to do business because you knew what you were getting into and you could kind of expect the operating environment to operate in a certain way. Um, and then some of the policy choices, most notably zero COVID and the adherence to zero COVID during Omicron, but then some of the more recent headline garnering events around the national espionage law um, and those types of, of things have kind of got a lot of foreign firms concerned. Um, and so I don't know if that means China feels uninvestable in the long term. I would posit that many businesses see that the size, attractiveness and centrality of the Chinese market means you know they can't escape from it, of course, and they don't want to. They still see it as somewhere important to do business and they want to be a part of China's growth story, but they're just not sure how to move forward in the short term. And I suppose the challenge, Maddie, is that both want to see concrete steps now, not just lip service from these meetings, and both have very different ideas about how to do business. China doesn't see why its ch um, domestic chip ambitions are a matter of national security concerns, um, whereas the US, of course, wants some clarity on those very thorny issues. So what happens now? Yeah, I think we're going to be in a, in a kind of a difficult period for the, the com uh, for the next while, um, in part because of this disconnect. So, you know, a good example of this is the uh, the, the headlines when you had Mintz and Bain, for example, under scrutiny for, um, you know, we don't know exactly what was going on in either of those cases. But one of the issues that you've seen uh, in China is kind of the suggestion that you shouldn't politicize business. And then on the kind of the foreign or U.S. business side, they say doing due diligence before concluding a business deal isn't political. That's just the way we do business globally, that you want to kind of lift the hood and look underneath and understand the kind of the partner that you're going to uh, acquire or do business with, etc. cetera. Um, and so I think we're in a challenging time where on the one hand, you also have good rhetoric coming out of Beijing. For example, the, the 24 point plan to encourage foreign investment. Um, you know, foreign investor confidence though hasn't been improved by that. Uh, it's really been eroded even, you know, that's borne out in the FDI data, but also in sentiment surveys from uh, business chambers in China. And we don't think that those measures will significantly reverse this trend because investor concerns, whether these are institutional investors, private investors, MNCs looking to make investments in China versus somewhere else, they still have a lot of the same issues at play, whether that's the slowing growth, operating environment, attitude towards private enterprise, supply chains, and growing home market pressure for multinational firms to de-risk from China. Um, and so what you saw also in response to these measures on improving foreign investor, uh, the foreign investment environment was on the one hand, uh, business chambers and others saying, well, this is this is great. This The, the language here is great. The rhetoric is great. But what's going to be the reality on the ground? How is this going to be implemented? What's going to be the practical Result and that we haven't seen yet. So until until we see more concrete measures, I think there's still going to be a bit of a holding pattern.